Nityananda um, on Nityanand Trayodashi. Um, if, um, if any of you are in a, a position where you can turn on your videos, then I would be really grateful. Uh, just it, it uh, inspires me in terms of giving class to be able to see people's expressions and to know that they're there. So um, I know some of you may not be able to do it, but if you can, then please go ahead and turn on your video if your bandwidth allows. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Melitam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nityananda Maham Nomi Sarvananda Karamparam Harinama Pradam Devam Avadhuta Shiromanim Ajanulam Bita Bhujau Kanakavadato Sankirtanai Kapitaro Kamalayatakshau Vishwam Bharo Dvijavaro Yuga Dharma Palo Vande Jagat Priyakaro Karuna Vataro. So um, uh, uh, I have some verses I want to read with you from Chaitanya Charitamrita, but uh, they will come a little bit later in the class. I want to build up to it uh, in order to help us understand the significance of the occasion. So, of course, Nityananda Trayodashi is today. Uh, and just uh, a few weeks before the appearance day of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, Gaur Purnima. So <clears throat> we know from Bhagavad Gita that Lord Krishna comes in every uh, age in order to reestablish dharma, to, dis uh, to liberate the pious, to save the pious, and to destroy the wicked. Um, as he says, yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata. And uh, as Krishna says in the Gita, if we understand the reason for his appearance, Janma Karma Chame Divyam, we understand why Krishna appears and his activities, why he performs those activities and how he acts in this world, then our own engagement in the material world is finished. So in most avatars, Krishna comes to, um, to destroy the demons and he does so in a literal way. He, kills those who are wicked. And so as Lord Ramachandra, he destroyed Ravan, and as Lord Nisingadev, he destroyed Hiranyakashipu. And as Lord Krishna, he came to kill so many demons like Kansa and Putana and Bakasura and Aghasura. So Krishna does this in order to rid the world of those who terrorize the people of this world and to make those people who are innocent uh, suffer. Uh, but in this age of Kali Yuga, Krishna, comes in such a way that he does not um, harm anyone, that he does not have to kill anyone. He comes as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the only way in which he um, uh, 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 reestablishes dharma is to um, liberate those, those who are uh, uh, sinful. And he does this by his mercy. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is therefore known as Karunavatara, the one who is the most merciful incarnation. Not only does he not destroy anyone, not only does he give them his mercy and liberates them, but besides liberating them, he gives them that gift which no other incarnation before him has bestowed, namely the gift of love for Krishna, Krishna Prema. Namo Maha Vadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate. Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurat Vishena Maha. So he is Mahavadanya, uh, the most munificent incarnation, Karunavatara, the very incarnation of mercy. And the reason for that is because he liberates everyone with his mercy and gives them Krishna Prem or pure love for Krishna. Something that no other avatar has given so freely to people who are so undeserving. However, we hear that um, even though Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so merciful that he breaks open the storehouse of love for Krishna and distributes it to anyone and everyone without discrimination, even though he's the most merciful avatar, still there is someone even more munificent, more merciful than he. And that is Lord Nityananda. So this is something for those who have been practicing Krishna consciousness, you may be well aware of how Nityananda Prabhu is considered to be the most merciful, 
even more than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But the question I want to raise before you is how is this possible? How is this possible that that person who is al already giving the greatest gift, there can be someone even more merciful than him? How can we understand the mercy of Lord Nityananda, his compassion? So in order to answer this question of Nityananda Prabhu's mercy and how he can be even more merciful than Mahaprabhu, we need to take a step back, uh, actually many steps back we have to take. And, um, uh, he, and to understand his mercy, we have to understand the nature of the material world itself. You see Krishna in the spiritual world, he's playing without any, he engages in his lila, in his pastimes, without any care in the world except for where Mother Yashoda has hidden the butter today, right? This is his primary concern. Are the gopis happy with me or are they upset? Uh, this is Krishna's main engagement. Uh, he's, he's always engaged in Krishna's pastimes, in his, uh, in his activities, his eternal lila. So when it comes time to take care of us, that is those living entities who have found themselves in this material world uh, and have decided to live separately from Krishna and are struggling with the material uh, uh, elements, prakriti, sthani, karshati. Uh, when it comes time to take care of us, Krishna delegates that responsibility to his brother, Balaram or Baladev. Uh, between Krishna and Balaram, there is no difference. Baladev is Krishna himself. The only difference between Krishna and Balaram is their form. Uh, Baladev is white, Krishna is black. But otherwise, between Krishna and Balaram, other than form, there's no difference. He's a plenary expansion of Krishna, means 100% full. And Krishna entrusts this important task to Lord Baladev. This Balaram is none other than Lord Nityananda. So, uh, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna, Nahe Anya. Balaram, Hoilo, Nitai. That Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none other than Radha and Krishna combined. Radha Bhavad Yuti Subalitam, Nomi Krishna Swarupam. He's Krishna himself with the mood and the complexion of Srimati Radharani, her bhav and her color. Uh, and in the same way, Lord Nityananda is. Uh, Balaram. Uh, and so um, uh, this Baladev, uh, this brother of Lord Krishna, he's, he's Krishna's immediate manifestation and all the responsibility of the material world, Krishna gives to him. So how does Balaram execute that responsibility? I, I want you to now think about, to pay attention to the extent that Lord Balaram goes to, that Lord Nityananda goes to, in order to take care of us, the living entities fallen in the mature world, and to liberate us. Right? He's known as Patita Pavan. But I want you to think about, to see the extent to which Baldev goes through an uh, extensive process in order to uh, liberate us. So first of all, Lord Baladev expands into the Chaturvyuha, four forms of Lord Vishnu, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, Aniruddha, and Vasudev. Four forms, these are four-handed forms of the Lord that are existent in Vaikuntha in the spiritual world. And Lord Baladev um, expands into these four forms. His direct expansion is Mahasankarshan, one of the four Chaturvyuha. And through this, these four forms, he maintains and, and expands all the, um, Vaikuntha planets, all the spiritual realm. Then from uh, 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 Mahasankarshan uh, comes his form as Mahavishnu. Okay? So from Baladev to Sankarshan, from Sankarshan to Mahavishnu. And in this form as Mahavishnu, he lies on the causal ocean, Karana, Karano Dakashai Vishnu. He lies on the causal ocean. And uh, as he lies there, he breathes out 
all the universes while he sleeps in yoga nidra. And he creates all the universes that come from the pores of his body as he breathes out. And when he breathes in, they all come back within him again. Now, at this point, the Lord has created the material world. He's created the space for the living entities to express their desires, to struggle, to enjoy, to suffer as they wish. And the Lord could very well leave us at this point to our own devices and say, okay, uh, I've given you the space. Now you do whatever you like. I'm going to go back to my business. But he's not satisfied with this. He wants to actually take care of us, not just create the space, but also help us to manage the space and to ultimately get out of it. And so then into all those universes that he creates, he enters each one of those universes as Garbho Dhakashai Vishnu, the Lord who lies in the Garbho Dhaka ocean. And there he lies on uh, Ananta Shesha and uh, he, um, uh, from his navel comes Lord Brahma. And all the different planetary systems within our universe are created by him. And then Lord Brahma comes and he populates each one of those planets with different types of living entities, different forms, creates the whole situation. At this point, we may think that the Lord's job is done, that he created the space, he gave us the person in charge, namely Lord Brahma, who then creates on his behalf all of the different uh, spaces for us to live and to act and to enjoy and to suffer. He's done everything, right? And he's even planted himself into the universe. So his work would be done. But even here, the Lord is not satisfied. That his concern for the living entities is so great that yet he wants to take care even more of them and find ways of ensuring that not only is the world taken care of, but every living being within this world has his guidance and his companionship. And so then from Garbho Dakashai Vishnu, he expands into Kshiro Dakashai Vishnu, the Lord who is the Paramatma within the heart of every living entity. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Upadrashtanu Mantacha Bharta Bhokta Maheshwara Paramatmeti Chapyukto Dehismin Purusha Para. That the Lord, there's another ruler within the heart besides the living entity. There's another Lord there, Upadrashta who is observing everything we are doing, anumanta, and giving us permission, uh, anumati, to do what we want, and guiding us and directing us. And so, as the living entities, as we move from one body to another, from the greatest birth as Lord Brahma, down to horrible, horrible lives as cockroaches or bugs or whatever in this world, even as we embarrass ourselves and put ourselves into detestable conditions, even then, Krishna, Lord Baladev, never abandons us. He is still there as the Lord within the heart, guiding the living entity, both telling us how to fulfill our material desires. Okay, if you want this, then go here. Go in this direction. This is where, you, where you'll find food. This is where you'll find companionship. And reminding us that this is not our home and this is not how we're going to be happy, that we should turn towards him. And for that purpose, he is willing to enter into the most horrific, detestable circumstances just to be there with us, never abandoning us even for a moment even as we become an amoeba or a worm, the Lord is right there. And in this form, as Baladev, he is the Chaitya Guru. As, as Kshiro Dakashai Vishnu, he's the Chaitya Guru, the Lord within the heart, the spiritual master within the heart, Chaitya Guru, who guides the living entity and helps uh, the living entity return back to him by providing him proper guidance on the path by nudging us in the right direction towards bhakti. But even this is not enough for Lord Baladev in terms of taking care of us. 
And so even at his, as his internal manifestation as Chaitya Guru, the Guru within the heart is there. But for so many living entities, that Guru within the heart is, um, we cannot, is invisible. We cannot hear him. We cannot see him because of our own conditioning. And so then Lord Baladev manifests externally. Lord Nityananda manifests externally as the, um, uh, as the, the, the external spiritual master, the spiritual master who we see physically, our guru, who is the representative of, uh, um, of the Lord in the heart, who is the representative of Lord Baladev. The spiritual master is the representative of Lord Nityananda, right? So Lord Nityananda is the, therefore the Adi Guru, the original spiritual master, because he's the spiritual master within the heart of every living entity, the one who's always been guiding us. And he manifests externally through his representative, the spiritual master, the guru, who then guides us in our spiritual life on a day-to-day -day basis in a way that even the most foolish and unsensitive person an intuitive person can see and hear those instructions and improve their Krishna consciousness, right? So, Brahmanda Brahmite Hoyle Kona Bhagyavan Jeev, Guru Krishna, Prasade Pai Bhakti Lata Beach. So, you see the journey that Lord Nityananda, that Lord Baladev takes in order to make sure that we are cared for, that we are protected, that we make it back to God. How long is that journey we went through? From Krishna's abode in the spiritual world, where Krishna does not have to worry about anyone and anything. He could leave us to suffer forever if he wanted to. Why should he have to worry? And yet out of his compassion, he sends Lord Baladev on this mission. And it is through his extensions and expansions and his reaching down into the material world that ultimately, we get the shelter of the spiritual master. We get the shelter of the Paramatma within the heart. And at every stage, Krishna is there. Lord Baladev is there. Lord Nityananda is there to make sure we are okay. So in this way, um, uh, uh, Lord Nityananda is actually even more merciful than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And his representative, the spiritual master, Guru, is even more merciful than Krishna himself. And in order to then finally get the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we must first approach Lord Nityananda and receive his mercy. Because he is the one who is the conduit from the material world to the spiritual world, from our condition here to where we want to be ultimately. Um, so without his mercy, uh, we're not going to be able to get the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There are many, many nice examples of this, wonderful stories regarding this in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. And uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the one, one of my favorites is the story of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. Before he became Goswami, when he was just Raghunath, uh, living in a... Um, he was born and raised in a Kayasta Bengali family and a very, very wealthy family. And he had met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Shantipur uh, and immediately wanted to join Mahaprabhu. Just go with him and give up everything. His parents, his family, um, his, all his wealth. He was so attached uh, to the Lord. Uh, but uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, no, you stay at home. Uh, and you behave exactly like a pounds and shilling man. You behave exactly like a businessman. Do your duties properly. Um, serve your parents. And one day when the time is right, the Lord will give you his shelter and free you from your material bondage. So this is, this is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's typical instruction to all those who wanted to join him. Uh, who, as he journeyed throughout India, spreading love for God, People wanted to follow him in the thousands, in the millions. And everyone he would tell that you do your duties, but think of Krishna all the time in your heart and internally become renounced. This is what he told Rupa and Sanatan Goswami also, very famously. Uh, he said that 
you should act in, in your material activity so well that no one even discovers that you are a devotee of Krishna. Yet in your mind, you should always think of no one but Krishna. Just like a woman who is married, uh, does her household duties even better if she has a paramour or a lover other than her husband. So he gives a very uh, unusual example, but a very powerful one. And he says, if you have a lover, then in order that your lover is not dis discovered, you will do your household duties even better. No one should suspect anything. In the same way, a devotee has a secret lover, that is Krishna. And our hearts should be given to Krishna, 100%. In, in her mind, that woman is constantly thinking of her paramour, but externally she was doing her household work very, very well. In the same way, uh, we should think of Krishna in our mind continuously, but externally we should do our activities so well that everyone looks at a devotee and thinks, wow, they are so expert. They're so good at what they do. I would love to have this devotee as a family member, as a colleague, as a citizen of the state or whatever it is. He said this, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, similar instruction to many, many people. So he told Raghunath Das Goswami the same thing. He said, you should do your duties. And when the time is right, Krishna will show you the way. So Raghunath Das Goswami, for a year, uh, it says he engaged um, very faithfully and very in a very focused way on so many things, including there was a whole tax evasion issue that took place with his parents and his uncle. And he dealt with that with the local tax collector. And so, you know, like IRS and stuff like that, he took care of everything. Uh, but after a year, he started to become very restless and he wanted to uh, join Mahaprabhu. So he tried running away from home, but his father was a very, uh, wealthy person, and he would send his men every time who would go and catch him and drag him back home. And practically every other day, he was running away like this, and his father would send people and drag him. So nothing was working. And Raghunath Das Goswami was becoming more and more uh, disheartened and confused. Why is the Lord not allowing this to happen? And that's when he came upon the solution. That's when he realized what the issue was. First of all, he needed to take shelter of Lord Nityananda. And fortunately, Lord Nityananda was not too far away. He was at that time residing in the village of Panihati. And so he went without too much difficulty because it was just nearby. So Raghunath Das Goswami, with all the men and everyone, he went to visit Nityananda Prabhu. And he saw Nityananda there, sitting under a tree, uh, uh, on a rock, under a tree, surrounded by his close associates. And the other devotees were actually cowherd boys in um, Krishna Leela. They were all surrounded there. And he, he was so overwhelmed by Nityananda Prabhu's brilliance. He was looking so brilliant and so beautiful and so influential, hundreds of people around him, he was really overcome, right, overwhelmed. So this is an important moment in our spiritual life when we come to recognize not just the glories of Krishna, but the necessity of surrendering to the spiritual master. And you know, in, in our spiritual lives, this comes later, actually. People are very happy to bow before God, come to the temple, put their head down, put some money in the hundi, and to bow before the Lord, but to understand the glories of the spiritual master, to understand the glories of the Vaishnavas is something much more difficult. Just going back to Krishna Leela, you know the story of Dvivida, a gorilla. So he was one of the, uh, um, well, you could say demons, although he wasn't exactly a demon. He was an uncouth gorilla that, uh, that, um, uh, that uh, Baladev killed. In, uh, in Vrindavan. And Dvivida and Mainda were actually both uh, gorillas, monkeys in Ramlila. And they served Lord Ramachandra wonderfully by helping find Mother Sita and build the bridge across the ocean. But our Acharyas explain that these monkeys did not appreciate Lakshman, that they had a sarcastic and disrespectful attitude towards Lakshman. And so in their when the Lord appeared as Krishna 
with his brother Balaram, they had to come face to face and appreciate the glories of Lord Baladev before they could finally get the mercy of Krishna or Lord Ramachandra. So it's, it's not an easy thing. It's not an automatic thing that we understand the glory of Guru when we understand the glory of Krishna, that we understand Nityananda when we understand Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In fact, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami speaks of people who accept only Mahaprabhu but reject other members of the man, Panchatattva, uh, that such people are not, uh, they, they cannot be liberated. Right? by that discriminatory mentality, he says. So anyway, Raghunath Das Goswami was not in this condition, but uh, he, he, was, he was already a wonderful devotee and full of humility. But he comes in front of Lord Nityananda and he's impressed, he's overwhelmed by the Lord's beauty, by his brilliance, by his power. And being full of humility, uh, Raghunath Das Goswami um, offers his obeisances to Lord Nityananda from a distance. He doesn't come close. Now, Nitai is always, uh, um, he's always in a good mood, right? He's always joyful and he's always happy. This is one of his qualities. Uh, even in his form as Lord Balaram, you'll find that he's always drunk on Varuni. He's always, he's always having a good time, right? He's always joyful. This is the characteristic of Krishna consciousness. Susukam kartum abhyayam. Actually, this is one of the characteristics of the guru, of the spiritual master, that the spiritual master is always joyful in practicing Krishna consciousness, right? Full of, the heart is always full of joy, always full of happiness. Like Prabhupada says, where is the difficulty? So uh, Nityanand Prabhu is always in a good mood. And as soon as he sees Raghunath Das Goswami, uh, he starts joking with him. He says, uh, who are you? You are a thief. You come here right away. Just like a thief, you're staying in a distance, afraid. Thieves don't come close. They stay far away. So you are staying in a distance. You come here. Now that I have caught you, I will punish you. Why is he calling him a thief? Because he's very wealthy. And anyone who possesses wealth, but does not offer that wealth to the Lord, that wealth belongs to Krishna, ultimately. Right? Nothing belongs to us. We don't come into this world with money. We don't leave with money. It's always just on loan to us. And so uh, he's a wealthy person and he's saying, but you've, you've not given that wealth to the Lord. You're keeping it. You're considering yourself wealthy. This is someone else's wealth. You're a thief. Come here and I shall punish you. So uh, he catches hold of, of uh, Raghunath Das Goswami, pushes him to the ground and puts his lotus feet upon Raghunath Das Goswami's head. And all the devotees jump up in joy and ecstasy. Haribo, Haribo, Raghunath Das Goswami has gotten the Lord's mercy. And at that point, he says, now my punishment for you, Raghu, is that you must feed all the devotees here with a feast of chipped rice and yogurt and condensed milk. So, of course, this Leela, some of you may be familiar with. Uh, and in the interest of time, I won't go through too much detail about the festival itself, but it's to say the least, it's a grand festival. All the devotees from that area, from neighboring villages all come together when they hear a festival is, is being held and everyone gets two big pots, one with uh, um, uh, rice and uh, condensed milk and one with rice and yogurt. And everyone is fed to their full satisfaction. And when the shopkeepers, the people who sell rice and milk and yogurt from nearby villages, they hear that this festival is happening. Everyone wants to make a good sale. No? So they all bring their ingredients, their goods to Pani Hati. And Raghunath Das Goswami buys all of their goods and then makes them sit down and eat their own food. And now you also partake in the festival. And so the whole occasion is very funny and very joyful. But at that point, point, something very amazing happens, which is that Lord Nityananda wants Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be there. And Mahaprabhu is right now in Puri, hundreds of miles away. But by his meditation, he invites the Lord to come. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears there. And Lord Nityananda, at this point, he starts walking with Mahaprabhu throughout the lines of devotees. And from every pot, 
he takes one morsel and pushes it into Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mouth and laughs and starts feeding the Lord. So very few devotees can see this. Uh, most cannot. Uh, but the whole scene is very similar to Krishna and Balaram eating on the banks of the Yamuna with their friends, uh, the whole lila of uh, eating together. Uh, and and, uh, and Nityana, what's significant about this is that Nityanand Prabhu, he has many different relationships with Mahaprabhu. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, he explains this, how Nityanand Prabhu serves Mahaprabhu. He relates to Mahaprabhu in three different ways. As his senior, his guru, his older brother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as his sakha or his friend, and as his bhritya or servant or dependent. So normally one of these relationships is all you get um, with Krishna. Some people serve the Lord as their senior, like as Krishna's senior, like uh, Nanda Maharaj and Madhya Yashoda or Shachi Mata, Jagannath Mishra. Others serve as juniors uh, and others serve as Krishna's friends. But the quality of Lord Baladev and the quality of Nityananda Prabhu is that he serves Krishna in all three of these capacities as equal, as senior, and as the Lord's junior, all three. And in this Leela, we see all of these things come forward. Just like he invites Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and feeds him first. He meditates upon him and feeds him first because Mahaprabhu is his Lord, is his master. Ekala Ishara Krishna ar sabhritya. There's only one master, Krishna. Everyone else is his dependent, including Balaram, including Nityananda. So he knows his position and he meditates on the Lord. He invites him, he feeds him first. But also he's Krishna's friend, right? He's Mahaprabhu's friend. And you see this joking quality between Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu on a regular basis. And here he's picking up and feeding him. And just like on birthdays, we feed people, it makes a mess and we laugh. Right? So he's feeding Mahaprabhu again and again from each devotee's plate and enjoying very much. Anyway, so back to the point. Nityanand Prabhu invites Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, right? He has the power to call him. No one else can. But Nityanand Prabhu, by his meditation, Mahaprabhu is there. When this festival concludes, everyone goes home. Nityanand Prabhu goes to Raghav Pandit's house uh, to rest to have Harinam Sankirtan well into the evening and then to take evening prasad. At Raghav Pandit's house, when they sit for evening prasad, Raghunath Das Goswami is helping Raghav Pandit to serve uh, Lord Nityananda. And Nityananda Prabhu there again, he starts to feel separation from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And once again, he calls Lord Chaitanya by his meditation and asks Raghav Pandit to put a seat Next to him on his right side, he puts a seat and uh, once again, Mahaprabhu and Nityanam Prabhu eat together to their full satisfaction. All the devotees eat with them and they all invite Raghunath Das Goswami. They say, you please come and you eat with us also. But Raghav Pandit, the host, he says, no. Raghu is going to eat at the end later because he has a plan in mind. After both the brothers, Dui Bhai, Right? Chaitanya Nitai. When they finish eating uh, wonderful food, Raga Pandit's food was just like nectar, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami says. In his house, Radharani herself used to cook. They finished eating the wonderful prasad. Uh, then um, at that point, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, they get up. Mahaprabhu goes, Nityananda Prabhu goes to take rest, and Raga Pandit takes the Mahaprasad, the leftovers from the plate of Nityananda Prabhu and feeds them to Raghunath Das Goswami. The next morning, and here comes the climax of the story. The next morning, um, Raghunath Das Goswami, when, when um, Nityananda Prabhu is awake and he's, he's, he's gone back to uh, sit and speak under that same tree where he met him for the first time in Panihati, uh, under that same rock, or on the same rock, under the same tree. Uh, then at that point, uh, um, Raghunath Das Goswami thinks, 
this is my opportunity. And so he goes uh, and with Raghav Pandit, and not directly himself, but through Raghav Pandit, through this senior Vaishnav, he, he places a petition before Lord Nityananda, uh, asking for the mercy and shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it is those verses that I want to read for you from Chaitanya Charitamrita. They are a beautiful, beautiful prayer uh, for Mahaprabhu's mercy, but it's a prayer to Lord Nityananda for Lord Chaitanya's mercy. And all of us on this day of Nityananda Trayodashi, we can offer our uh, prayers to Lord Nityananda in the same mood. Of course, we're not as humble or renounced as Raghunath Das Goswami, but we can follow in his footsteps and pray to Lord Nityananda to seek the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So um, let me just uh, share my screen and you can all follow. There's a few verses here. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda So oh, sorry one second I had it open in the wrong place that was also a very nice uh, description of Nityananda Prabhu, but uh, give me one second. Okay. So this is Antya Lila, uh, chapter six. Um, Text number 127, 126, we'll start with. And let me share the screen again. So. Prate Nityananda Prabhu Ganga Snan Koriya Chai Vrikha Mule Vashilo Nijagana Laya. In the morning, after taking his bath in the Ganges, Nityananda Prabhu sat down with his associates beneath the same tree under which he had previously sat. Raghunatha Asi Kaila Charanabandhan Raghav Panditvara Kaila Nivedan Raghunath Das went there and worshipped Lord Nityananda's lotus feet. Through Raghav Pandit, he submitted his desire. Adham Pamar Mui Hina Jivadham Mora Icha Hoye Paya Chaitanya, Paya Chaitanya Charan. I am the lowest of men, the most sinful, fallen, and condemned. Nevertheless, I desire to attain shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Vaman Haya Jena Chanda, Dharibare Chai, Aneka Jatna Kainutate Kabhu Siddhanai. Like a dwarf who wants to catch the moon. I have tried my best many times, but I've never been successful. Jatabara Pailami Grihadi Chadiya Pita Mata Dui More Rakhaye Bandhiya. Every time I tried to go away and give up my home relationships, my father and mother unfortunately kept me bound. Umar Kripa Bina Keho Chaitanya Napai Tumi Kripa Koila Tara Adhame Hapai. So this is the key verse here. Tomar kripa bina keho chaitanya na pai. No one can attain the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without your mercy. But if you are merciful, even the lowest of men can attain shelter at his feet. Ajogya mui nibedan korite kori bhoy, more chaitanya deho goshai haya sadai. Although I'm unfit and greatly afraid to submit this plea, I nevertheless request you, sir, to be especially merciful to me by granting me shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mora mathe padadhari karoho prasad nirvigna chaitanya paya karo ashirvad. 
placing your feet on my head, give me the benediction that I may achieve the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu without difficulty. I pray for this benediction. And now um, I'll read um, Nityanand Prabhu's uh, response. Tabe Raghunatha Pade, Tabe Raghunatha Prabhu, Nikate Bolaila, Tara Mate Padadhari, Kahite Lagila. Then Lord Nityananda Prabhu called Raghunath Das near him, placed his lotus feet upon Raghunath Das's head, and began to speak. Tumije Karailae Pulinam Hojan, Tumai Kripakari Gaura, Kaila Agaman. My dear Raghunath Das, he said, since you arranged the feast on the bank of the Ganges, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came here just to show you his mercy. Kripakari kaila chira dugdha bhojan, nitya dekhi ratya kaila prasada bhakkan. By his causeless mercy, he ate the chipped rice and milk. Then after seeing the dancing of the devotees at night, he took his supper. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Gaurahari came here personally to deliver you. Now rest assured that all the impediments meant for your bondage are gone. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will accept you and place you under the charge of his secretary, Swarup Damodar. You will thus become one of the most confidential internal servants and will attain shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Being assured of all this, return to your own home. Very soon, without impediments, you will attain the shelter. At the lotus feet of Lord Sri Chaitanya. And he becomes known there as um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually places him in the care of Swarup Damodar, his most uh, intimate servant and um, his, his associate rather. Swarup Damodar was his closest associate, none other than Lalita Devi. And he places him under his care. And Raghunath Das Goswami becomes famous as Swarupera Raghu, uh, the Raghu of Swarup, of Swarup Damodar. And, um, and from this point on, the mercy he receives is unlimited. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives him a Govardhan Shila that he has himself worshipped, as well as a Gunja Mala. And in this way, he gives him, gives him shelter at Govardhan and gives him intimate service to Srimati Radharani, uh, of, for whom that Gunja Mala is very, very dear. So um, we see through this Katha that if we want to achieve Krishna's mercy, if we want to achieve Mahaprabhu's mercy, we have to go first to Lord Nityananda, seek shelter from him. And when he says, now you will have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, then our success is guaranteed. Right? We will still have to make effort, but our success is guaranteed. And we can do that by following in the footsteps of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami you see the magic formula that Raghunath Das Goswami showed in order to get Nityanand Prabhu's attention. What was that? First of all, he rendered service to the Vaishnavas. Nityanand Prabhu himself identifies that as the number one thing that got him Mahaprabhu's mercy, is that he uh, rendered service to the devotees by feeding them this wonderful feast of, uh, at Panihati. A second thing that we see Raghunath Das Goswami did was he approached Lord Nityananda for his mercy through the guidance and help of a senior Vaishnava, Raghav Pandit. Means he always uh, considered himself to be not qualified and approached with the help of those who knew exactly how and when and in what way to approach Lord Nityananda. So the shelter of uh, the senior Vaishnavas is so important for our success in Krishna consciousness and even for approaching the spiritual master. And then thirdly, he maintained so much humility uh, through the process. 
He actually, uh, his humility was expressed in so many ways, by his words, by his behavior, um, by the way in which he served all the devotees, and also how he gave, um, I, I failed to mention this part, but he actually, after this whole incident, he gave so much dakshina to Lord Nityananda, to every devotee who came uh, to Raghav Pandit's house. Uh, and he told them, uh, he told Raghav Pandit, please give this to them in such a way that they do not know where it came from. Right? So, so much humility he had that he gave so much wealth away that was his own. And yet he insisted that Lord Nityananda and any of the devotees should not know that that was coming from him, that he was actually the, the, the contributor. And finally, uh, we see his quality of intense eagerness, that he never gave up his eagerness to, um, uh, to achieve shelter at Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet. Right? That intense desire ultimately helped him find the way to do that and achieve success. So by service to the Vaishnavas, by getting the guidance of senior devotees, uh, by maintaining humility, and by never giving up our intense desire, we can achieve um, the mercy of Lord Nityananda. And when we get Nityananda Prabhu's mercy, then Lord Chaitanya's mercy is guaranteed. Actually, um, we see again and again in Chaitanya Charitamrita that the way to Lord Chaitanya's heart is through Lord Nityananda. Even Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, he tells his story. We don't have the time to tell. But Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, he is, it is Lord Nityananda who tells him, go to Vrindavan where all things shall come to pass. And he gives him shelter in Sri Vrindavan Dham. We see with Jagdai and Madhai that the reason they achieved Mahaprabhu's mercy is because somehow they got the mercy of Lord Nityananda. So this is a, this is a repeated story. This is a repeated um, success story that we find throughout Chaitanya Chaitamrita and Chaitanya Bhagavat. That the way to Mahaprabhu's heart is through uh, Lord Nityananda. And this is why in that wonderful song, Narutam Das Thakur, he says, huh? Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Karo More Tuma Vina Kedayalu Jagata Samsare Oh, my Lord, you have appeared uh, to liberate those who are fallen. That other than you, who is more merciful? Who, where can you find a more merciful personality than Sri Chaitanya? Patita Pavana Hetu Tavayavatara Mo Sama Patita Prabhu Napai Beyara. He says, your avatar is specifically for the purpose of liberating those who are fallen. And I'm the most fallen. So my claim to your mercy is first. So he's saying here, you cannot find anyone more merciful than you, O Lord Chaitanya. But then in the third verse, he tells us about one person who is more merciful than him. Ha ha Prabhu Nityananda. Premananda Sukhi Kripavalo Kanakoro Ami Bodo Dukhi. He says, but there is one personality we can go to to get Mahaprabhu's mercy. That is Lord Nityananda. And that Nityananda, he is Premananda Sukhi. He is always happy in the ecstasy of Krishna Prema. Therefore, Please shower your merciful glance upon me. Why? Because Ami Poro Duki. I am so unhappy. And Prabhupada explains that this is the condition of all of us in this material world. We have period, we have unhappiness punctuated by moments of happiness. Right? And if our happiness has gone on for some time, we can rest assured 
that there is some misery around the corner, right? That's more or less a guarantee. Like the clock is ticking. If we've been happy for quite some time, you know some, some problem is around the corner. And yet we are always shocked. We're surprised. We think, oh my God, where did this come from? But this is predicted, right? This is, this is the nature of this world. So all of our condition, Narutam Das Thakur is speaking for all of us. Ami Boro Dukhi, I'm so unhappy. In fact, another place also, whenever he calls for Nityananda Prabhu, Narutam Das Thakur always makes this point. Nitai more korosuki. Ami Boro Dukhi, Nitai more korosuki. He says in another uh, bhajan, Oh Lord Nitai, you please make me happy because your name is Nityananda. And as I mentioned, he's always happy. He's always joking. He's always dancing. He's always got a good sense of humor. He's always joyful in Krishna consciousness, right? So this is, this is um, the quality of Lord Nityananda. This is why he's called Nitya Ananda. He's always joyful. So in this way, Narottam Das Thakur also makes the same point, right? That the mercy of Mahaprabhu is available to Nityananda. So I'll conclude at this point. Hopefully you had uh, some opportunity to reflect upon how Lord Nityananda Prabhu is the most munificent, the most merciful, even more merciful than Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, how we see this uh, be from the very, very beginning point of creation. It is Lord Nityananda who makes a pathway for us to go back to Godhead and then enters this material world and invites us to enter, to join the Lord in his pastimes, to engage in his devotional service. This is why we have any chance at all at joining Mahaprabhu's Leela. Otherwise, where would we be? So I'll stop with that and um, see if anyone has any questions or comments or thoughts. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, I will... I have, a, I have a, uh, one question. Uh, so one point, thank you. First of all, thank you for the wonderful class. It was very inspiring. Uh, one point that you made, I never heard that before about how Lord Nityananda Prabhu possesses all three rasas in one. Uh, um, so, so I'm just trying to relate it to Krishna Leela. So like in Krishna Leela, we, we hear about five primary rasas, right? So, um, uh, so, uh, so I was trying to figure out like how how can I make that comparison in the in the Chaitanya Leela, and um, so is there any place where we see conjugal uh, conjugal uh, rasa being displayed uh, in 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 Chaitanya Leela? Any personality who who who, who, who shares that? Yeah. Can, so can... you're asking in relation to Nityanand Prabhu to Balaram, or you're asking in relation to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? In, in Nityanand Prabhu's relation. Yeah. So uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami explains that these are these three ways in which Nityanand Prabhu serves uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Lord Balaram, if we want to, your question is about Krishna Leela. So actually, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami makes that parallel that there are these three ways in which Lord Baladev serves Krishna as servant, as friend, and as his senior. He says guru is the word he uses, but guru can mean not just like a spiritual guru, but any senior relationship, right? Um, so parental relationship uh, is there and, and teacher is there and so many things. So he gives very nice examples uh, in this, um, in Adilila of how, um, of how Lord Baladev also serves Krishna in this way. Uh, so for example, as a servant, when, um, when, uh, Brahma Vimohan Leela happens and uh, Lord Brahma takes away all the coward boys and calves. Then at that point, um, uh, uh, Krishna Manif expands himself as all the coward boys and calves. And even Lord Balaram is confused about who are these cows and who are these boys. And at that point, he says that this must be Maya Me Bhartur. This must be the Maya of my master. Why? Because may be vimohini. Even I have been bewildered by it. And there's nothing that can bewilder me except Krishna, right? Because he's my only master. There's no one above him. So in this way, he says, may bhartu, my Lord, 
people. So similarly, when uh, Lord Baladev uh, goes to uh, uh, Hastinapur to um, to make some to make peace after Samba kidnaps Duryodhana's daughter Lakshmana, and they're ready for a fight. And Lord Baladev he doesn't want to fight, uh, um, and so um, he goes with a peace proposal. And instead of making peace, the Kauravas start to criticize Krishna. Now, mind you, Lord Baladev went there against Krishna's wishes because again, he's more merciful than Krishna is. So he wanted to extend a chance, a give a chance to Duryodhana, even though he was so you know, misbehaved, but he wanted to give him a chance. So he gave him a chance, but the Kauravas, when they started to criticize Krishna, that Krishna is worthless and what right does he have to ask, demand anything of the Yadus. He is just like uh, the Yadus are like, uh, sorry, of the, of the Kauravas. The Yadus are just like uh, dogs at our table, eating scraps from our plate. And then uh, uh, Balaram becomes so angry. He becomes so upset and he starts to praise Krishna. He says, I have come to make peace, but you don't know who Krishna is. If you cross Krishna, then there's no hope. And so he shows again his loyalty, his servitude towards Krishna, that you don't know who this Krishna is. Uh, Ganesha, Mahesha, Dinesha, everyone falls at his feet and you think we're like dogs? Anyway, so in this way he does that. And then Krishna Askar Viraj Goswami gives examples of how he plays as a friend mm -hmm. and how he plays as uh, his senior and instructs Krishna. Krishna, Krishna Leela, you know, Baladev, when he lies, when he gets tired after playing, he lies with his head on the lap of a coward boy and uh, Krishna himself comes and massages Lord Balaram's lotus feet and praises him also when they're entering Vrindavan. So a beautiful description, I encourage you to read that chapter, but it's these three rasas that he describes uh, in terms of how Baladev relates uh, to, uh, with Krishna. Uh, now he assists in the conjugal rasa also. So Baladev is there everywhere uh, and he assists but the conjugal rasa is happens with Krishna and Shakti Tattva, right? In, in, with manifestation of Shakti, of Krishna's energy. Lord Balaram is Vishnu Tattva. So he is Krishna himself. So he assists in making arrangements and, you know, he'll sometimes put a blockage between Krishna and Srimati Radharani, telling Krishna, where are you going in the middle of the night? Who do you think you are? Who are these friends you have, right? And he'll try to protect him. And of course, this makes Krishna very anxious and further increases his mood of love uh, towards uh, the gopis. And in, in, so Balaram is there in, in everything, but in his own rasas, these are the three that are described. This is why uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami describes Lord Nityananda and Lord Baladev as the supreme personality of servitor Godhead. Mm -hmm. He is the supreme personality of Godhead, but in the form of servant. Mm -hmm. And therefore Balaram or Nityananda serves the Lord in every possible way. He's there in every form, as his bed, as an antashesha, as his umbrella, as his Brahman thread, as the holy dham, that is also Balaram, right? So in all of this, he's the supreme personality of servitor God. Thank you. Yeah, Baba. is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna, this is Radha. Um, I have a question about Nityananda. So just like Balaram and Krishna Leela want something different as Krishna, in ever in Gaur Leela, did, did Nityananda want something different than Chaitanya? Yes, yes. Very nice uh, question. So actually, uh, the point you make is very, very good. That one of the ways in which Baladev serves Krishna is by disagreeing with him, right? And very often he will do things that Krishna or he'll argue against Krishna. Just like when, uh, you know, Subhadra, it was time to marry their sister. And Balaram did not want, he got really upset when Arjun kidnapped Su Subhadra. Even though this was Subhadra's desire and Arjun's desire and Krishna's desire. But he was like, this is not right. And he had other plans for Subhadra. So he often goes against, and this increases their rasa, the mood, because uh, Krishna's leelas are no fun unless they are good obstacles to get over, right? And um, uh, otherwise there's no fun. Just like if you, if you have a tennis game 
and you don't have a net in the middle. Can tennis be fun without a net? No, you, the obstacle makes it fun. Right? It, it provides the challenge or with ping pong or with any game, you need some obstacle. So Krishna's Leela is like that also. And Baladev serves in that way. So Nityanand Prabhu also does the same. And one of the most uh, wonderful examples of that is the, the, the Danda Bhanga Leela, right? So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is, is going on one of his walking tours, Nityanand Prabhu is there. And when Mahaprabhu is not uh, paying attention, I think Mahaprabhu gives Nityanand Prabhu the sannyas danda. His, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he says now a sannyasi, recently actually become a sannyasi and he's carrying the, the eka danda, the, the sannyas danda. And it's, a, it's an eka danda because he took sannyas in the Mayavad school, whereas the Vaishnavas, they have three danda. Uh, so it's this one danda he's carrying as sannyasi. And Nityanand Prabhu comes and he, um, when Mahaprabhu is not looking, he, he breaks that uh, danda in three parts and throws it into the river. And Mahaprabhu externally becomes really angry at Nityananda Prabhu. How could you do this? It's so offensive to break a sannyasi's danda. But Nityananda Prabhu does it for more than one reason. One reason is that when a sannyasi achieves the position of parivrajakacharya, paramahamsa, then no uh, sannyas danda is necessary. Uh, then they can give up even the danda. They become completely transcendental. So he wanted to make the point that Mahaprabhu was already at that level of, uh, of giving up the sannyas uh, of Paramahamsa. So he didn't have to take that. And the second reason was that uh, this was a Mayavad sannyas danda. And Nityanand Prabhu wanted to make the point that we are not Mayavad sannyasis. So in this way, he did something that was seemingly against Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's wishes, but was actually... Uh, he understood very closely, very deeply what was Mahaprabhu's actual desire. So very nice question, Radha. Thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna? Yes, yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, Radhika Raman Das Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you for your class. And I'm calling from Portugal in the case you want to know. Uh, and Prabhu, my, my yes. question is related to the following. Uh, we know that in the spiritual world, uh, Lord Balaram takes the role of the older brother of, of Lord Krishna. And uh, it is well known that the moral duty of an older brother is to protect the younger brother. And during your class, I noticed that you said uh, many times that without the mercy of Lord Nityananda, we cannot go inside the heart of Lord Chaitanya. So my question is, uh, <clears throat> and we know that uh, uh, Lord Nityananda represents the spiritual master. So uh, my question is, is it that because the relationship in, in Krishna Lila he, between Lord Balaram and, and Lord Krishna is older brother and younger brother, and the older, older brother must protect the younger brother? Is it, is it that it is because of this reason that uh, unless you, you accept the spiritual master, in, in, uh, in Chaitanya Lila, you cannot go back home, back to Godhead to serve Radha and Krishna? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you so much Vijay Krishna Prabhu for that question. Thank you for joining us from Portugal uh, today. Um, you, but... you, you, are, you are welcome. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Uh, and so, um, yeah, so exactly because uh, uh, Nityananda Prabhu is the spiritual, is the Adi Guru, the spiritual master, and he is the one who um, is, ensures that Krishna is served properly. Uh, so he has two tasks, right? Number one, he is making sure that all the arrangements are just perfect for Krishna's pleasure. And number two, his job is to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to serve the Lord. So his job is to protect Krishna uh, as in protect in the sense that to prevent uh, improper service from being rendered. At the same time, 
His job is to expand the circle of service as wide as possible so that everyone can join in. Now, in the material world, we would consider this a conflict of interest, right? Someone who's a gatekeeper as well as a gate opener at the same time. But in uh, Balaram's case, he's entrusted with both of these tasks and being Ananta, being unlimited. His name, one of his names is Ananta Shesh, right? He's unlimited. He is able to easily do both tasks and do very, very well. So this is why when we come to Krishna, uh, we need to go through the spiritual master because uh, he is the one who's going to open the door uh, for us to serve Krishna. But he is also the one who is going to train us properly how to serve Krishna. Right? Just like when we serve the deities first, we say, Shri Guru Paramananda Premananda Palapada Prajananda Pradananda Sevayam Ma Niyojaya. We say, my dear spiritual master, you please engage me in, in assisting you in service. Sevayam Ma Niyojaya. You engage me in that service. So we sing also in the morning. Shri Vigrahara Dhananityanana Shingara Tanman Diramar Janado Yuktasya Bhaktams Chani Unjatopi. Same point. Yuktasya Bhaktams Chani Unjatopi. He is niyunjata. He is engaging bhaktan, all the devotees, yukta, in this service to Shri Vigraha Aradhana. So the spiritual master has both tasks to spread Krishna's mercy far and wide. Samsara dava nalali dhaloka tranaya karunya ghana ghanatvam. He's the cloud of mercy who is showering this mercy everywhere, just like Lord Nityananda. That's his first task. But then the second task is to make sure that once that mercy is showered and people are eager to serve, that they are properly engaged and trained nicely so that they can serve Krishna, not just any old way, but according to the right standard. Um, so both of these tasks belong to Lord Baladev. They belong to Lord Nityananda. And in this way, they also belong to his representative, the spiritual master, whether they be our gurus or our diksha gurus. Uh, Radhika Raman Das Prabhu, thank you for your wonderful answer. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna, um, Hare Krishna dear devotees. Uh, so I just would like to intervene here. I know that uh, it's very rare to have uh, His Grace Radhika Raman Prabhu amongst us. And I know how, uh, how difficult it is uh, to get him uh, on board uh, for the lecture for any congregation. And by his uh, sheer compassion, he agreed to be with us uh, uh, on this very auspicious occasion of Mission Interview. So, on behalf of entire Iskon Boston, I take this opportunity and express my deepest gratitude to His Grace Radhika Raman Prabhu. Hari, let us please chant one big time Hari Bo in a traditional Haribo. way. Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hari Bo! Hari Bo. A, brief, a brief introduction about Prabhu. He doesn't need any introduction. Everywhere in entire ISKCON, he's famous. And even outside ISKCON, in academic world, Prabhuji is very, very famous. He's like, you know, um, uh, is, uh, I mean, his fame is spread uh, pretty much uh, in the academic world and especially in ISKCON. Um, because many devotees who later on became uh, great scholars, uh, they have followed in the footsteps of uh, His Grace Radhika Raman Prabhu. And I know a couple of them. Uh, he's a disciple of uh, Radhika Raman Prabhu of uh, His Holiness Hanur Prashuk Swami while he was growing up in Idaho. So, uh, Pr 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 Prabhu, actually the introduction was already done at the oh, beginning. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. Sorry. No, no need to repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Better no problem. Sorry, Prabhu. I was, uh, yeah, sorry, I was busy in the, uh, in, in the services. Yes, so as, as we all know that uh, Prabhuji, how illustrious he is. And uh, despite he being busy and he was, uh, I, I guess, is in, in the middle of some moving to uh, some other place, but Prabhuji gave us this opportunity. So again, once again, I, uh, I thank on behalf of entire Iskon Boston. And we hope and pray uh, that uh, we would get this opportunity sometime later, when, uh, whenever it is possible for you. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu, once again. And also, we would like to thank uh, uh, his mother, uh, Her Grace Aruddha Mataji, who had been, and also uh, his brother, Gopal Prabhu, who had been very kind and merciful to join this, this, uh, this uh, Zoom session as well. And just because Prabhuji was giving, there were so many other devotees who had joined and they, were, they are also illustrious in, in their own way. Uh, so we also would like to express our gratitude uh, to all of them who have uh, who joined our session today. 
and uh, dear prabhu i just would like to mention you that this was uh, broadcasted uh, on youtube live so there were so many people uh, who have attended this so you may not see here uh, but they have attended online zoom and also this class is being recorded so this will be uh, viewed by those who have missed the opportunity to hear such a uh, such a nectarian uh past time of lord nitanda which perhaps uh, not heard uh, by uh, uh, by many people so once again thank you prabhu i cannot express like you know uh, my words are short to uh, to thank you enough thank you on behalf of uh, entire scon boston hari krishna prabhu hari bol uh, thank you so much prabhu ji for your kind words and my uh, greetings and obeisances to all the devotees here uh, many new persons but also many old friends are here so my obeisance is to all of you i hope you have a wonderful wonderful nityanand trayodashi celebration uh today and my apologies for keeping you late today i know you have more programs coming so thank no. you all chila so prabhat ki jai uh, your devotees are right now so i just wanted to let you know that this is a uh, from now onwards until gaur purnima we'll be having a, a the uh, the series uh, uh on gaur leela so prabhu ji has kicked off this this lecture series now uh, by his wonderful presentation on uh, on the anityanand leela so we'll continue this uh, 